called Rosie Garland and I write. I do words. I write short fiction, everything from teeny weeny flash fiction stories that are like a hundred words long all the way up to novels that are 100,000 words long. As you've probably gathered from how I introduced myself, I have an absolute passion for words and a passion for language. And that was and is nurtured by public libraries. They were where I started. The kind of family that I grew up in loved reading, but we couldn't afford to have books around the house. It's like that wasn't something that we could run to. But my mum and dad always had books in the house and one of my favourite things that I remember from being a kid were, was the Saturday afternoon trips to the local library with my mum and it was fantastic. I got to borrow four new books every week and all I had to do was love them and read them and then bring them back the Saturday after and get four new books and I devoured the children's library pretty damn quickly and I was allowed into the adult library uh, quite early on, chaperoned naturally. Libraries were the beginning of a love affair that has never waned. Fast forward a few years, um, libraries were a refuge to start off with. Um, the kind of people who made my life less than fun at school weren't so big on reading. I would go into the local library and hide and read and um, as a teenager I read a great deal of not very good science fiction and fantasy so let's hear it for not very good science fiction and fantasy because it was brilliant I was reading something. I can remember one of my first wonderful experiences with librarians who are the best people in the world who saw me reading all this pulp and said um i notice what you read um have you ever read gormenghast by mervyn peak and no i hadn't it was the beginning of me trusting librarians because they love books and they do great recommendations. Talk to librarians. They're in libraries because they love words too. I moved to Manchester. I fall in love with Cheatham's Library. I fall in love with the wonderful Portico Library. And in particular, in 2018, I approached John Ryland's Library with a project. I had a novel, a sort of time slip ghost novel set in the John Rylands Library. So I said to them, uh, would you like a writer in residence? And long story short, they said yes. So um, I had my own alcove. I could go into the John Rylands every day if I wanted and sit and write and soak in the amazing atmosphere. There was something about writing, in my case, a ghost story. And you know that saying, if these walls could talk, so there I was, surrounded by every book that had ever been borrowed, every conversation that I'd ever had, and particularly writing a ghost story in my case, thinking about the ghosts of everyone who'd ever been in the library and all the stories they might be able to tell me. Long story short, for me, libraries are magical. And libraries are just a perfect fit for anyone who's a creative whether that's dance, music, literature, wonderful central library, which is where we are now. You can use musical instruments. Libraries are one of the very few places that you can go, set up your laptop, work. Nobody comes and bothers you. Nobody comes and demands to know, you know, why you've been here for an hour and not bought a cup of tea yet. You don't have to buy anything. You can just be who you are. We hear that thing of like, oh, we don't need libraries now because everything's on the internet for free. Um, and anyone who tells you that either is hugely misinformed or lying. Libraries can't vanish with an outage or a glitch of an online system. So there's something about the physicality and the solidity of libraries that really appeals to me as well. So I'm actually going to finish with a quote by Neil Gaiman, if I may. Libraries are about freedom. Freedom to read, freedom of ideas, freedom of communication. Mm -hmm.